But we're here today to show you the first look at the all new NASCAR next gen Camaro Z01. Let's go over some of the highlights of the next gen Camaro race car. The lower roof line creates a much more streamlined dynamic greenhouse that combined with the shorter deck lid improves the downforce of the car. The small block V8 still drives the rear wheels and the front of the car has advanced cooling like the production Camaro. Air coming through the nose is extracted out of the hood with active hood vents similar to the production Camaro. As we look at the other features of the car, one of the more striking features are the larger wheels. 18 inch diameter wheels versus 15 inch diameter in the current generation. Also looking at the car down the side of the car, one of the things that's new with the next gen car are the exhausts that are now coming out of each side of the car versus just out of the right side in the current car. The car is also symmetric. So each side of the car is a mirror image of the other left and right. And as we look at all those features, these are all shared with a production Camaro. What is the ZL1 Camaro? And it was a lot of fun, obviously, taking in the aerodynamic effects, um, the, the body structure, and the overall confines that the NASCAR has put out there. It's been, been a fun project for us, and I think we've got a pretty cool product. Yeah, one thing that's really exciting for me is, in years past, and Eric, you know this really well, we, we struggle with the cooling of the car. Uh, we bring a lot of air into the front of the race car. It all goes into the underbody of the car, and we lose downforce. Well, with this current car, we've done some really neat things. You bring the new air in through here. It goes through the cooling system, system and it actually exits over here on the top of the hood. And what that does, instead of impeding downforce, you actually gain a little bit of downforce, which is a really neat concept and something that uh, the teams are looking forward to. The engine manufacturers really like that, right, because you have lower operating temperatures, which ultimately may cr increase your horsepower a little bit. I think it's going to be really cool because right now we build the whole chassis and it's a it's a front clip, a rear clip, and a center section. It's all welded together. When you have damage, you've pretty much destroyed the whole race car. So the front chassis part of this car is bolted on right here at the firewall. And the rear chassis is basically the same thing. And what that does is, once again, at the racetrack, you may be able to not replace the whole race car from a frontal impact. You might be able to just take and break it off right here, unbolt it, slide a new part on there, and get back right back onto the racetrack. There's probably a lot of people out there who've never even felt what that feels like. Uh, the production of those components on, on a streetcar ended probably in the 80s, right? So rack and pinion steering has, is something that's been around for quite some time. The direct link to the driver's hands, he's going to be able to feel the steering wheel, feel the tire and the contact patch on the asphalt significantly better than what they had in the past. So I think it's going to be a huge advantage to these guys. I think that's a huge advantage to us. I think uh, from a couple different levels, right? I think from a styling concept, it looks way cooler, right? Um, also, there's a lot of performance to be had with that. Uh, the steel wheel, obviously heavy, retains a lot of heat. You don't want that in, in a race car, right? You want to try to get the heat expelled out of there as much as you possibly can. So the larger wheel really helps with that. Obviously, we've got a lot of open area that we can get the air out of there to, to keep the brakes a lot cooler. Uh, one thing that's really obvious straight away is the mono lug as opposed to the five independent studs and lugs that we have on our current cars. The other thing that's really great is the braking system. The rotors are significantly larger, and what that does is that allows us to get the car woe down and the driver slow the car down without generating a lot of heat and really allowing them to have a little bit more of a feel with the car uh, coupled with the rack and pinion steering, it's going to be pretty neat to see the drivers react to that. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And for the duration of the event, we see a lot of times now that the, the brakes degrade over a course of a race, we may not have that problem with this car. I think the fans are going to audibly hear this change. And the reason is, is because when you have your exhaust exiting out of one side or the other, you're hearing all eight cylinders, man. They're just kicking and firing off. Now you're only going to hear four cylinders if you're standing on this side of the car and four cylinders if you're standing on that side of the car. But what that creates is a much more throaty and performance-based sound to it. Uh, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, also, the exhaust is encased in the, what's called the rocker box. So once again, an aerodynamic feature of this car is the smooth area underneath the exhaust pipes, which helps us create some downforce. Uh, another thing that the teams are going to continue to keep working on. Yeah, I think this is another important aspect of, of this car in general. We're trying to make sure our rel relevancy to the, the production car is high. Um, our fans can identify with what it is that we've got. Uh, they started the independent rear suspension 
on the streetcars in the Camaro in 2010. Okay, well, finally we're there. And the things that that allows us to do is your, your independent rear suspension, you can adjust your toe, your camber settings, you can really kind of get finicky and real finite with your adjustments to, to make sure that the driver's happy. And you're actually making acceptable changes to the actual racetrack that you're going to because they're all different, they're all unique. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about it is we're able to run now a full underwing underneath the race car due to the independent rear suspension. That's a huge aerodynamic advantage. And one of the things that I think the drivers are going to be able to feel because as you go around the racetrack, as the car travels and as it goes into different yaws uh, situations, they're going to know what that underwing is doing. You had mentioned it earlier, Eric, about the, uh, the ride height limitations that we've got with this car. So one of those keys is to make sure you're feeding this diffuser with air. And the more air that you put underneath there, the more it's going to be effective and the more you're going to get that air evacuated from underneath the race car, which creates that downforce that we're always searching for. So. With the spoiler, how it creates the low pressure, the diffuser, how it creates the low pressure and gets the air evacuating off from underneath the race car, you're going to have a lot of downforce with this race car. It's going to be a lot of fun. I agree with you 100%. And the stability thing is what we want to be able to give these drivers. So all of the aerodynamic enhancements, all of the independent uh, rear suspension, the rack and pinion, all of those things are just there to make sure that the drivers can aggressively race these race cars.